What really sets Uniqlo apart from its competitors? Is it just another brand built on simple clothing? Or is there something deeper driving its success? In a world where fashion brands come and go, Uniqlo has quietly risen to global prominence, transforming from a small local store in Japan into a retail giant. But is it their commitment to simplicity, their innovation in fabric technology, or something else entirely? And what does the name Uniqlo even mean? The answer might surprise you. But before we dive into what makes Uniqlo so successful, let's rewind a bit. It all started in a small town in Japan. And trust me, the journey from those early days to becoming a global retail giant is something you'll want to know, especially if Uniqlo is one of your go-to brands. There's something really fascinating about how it quietly disrupted the fashion world, and understanding where it all began sets the stage for exploring what truly makes Uniqlo stand out today. Uniqlo's journey begins in 1949, in a quiet town in Japan's Yamaguchi Prefecture. At the time, the company wasn't the global retail giant we know today, but a small family-run men's clothing business. The future of the company would soon rest in the hands of Tadashi Yanai, the son of the founder. Taking over the business from his father, Yanai had ambitions far beyond the local market. His goal was to build something much bigger, an empire that would eventually redefine casual fashion globally. In 1984, Uniqlo opened its first store in Hiroshima under the name Unique Clothing Warehouse. The name itself reflected the brand's straightforward approach to clothing, offering basic, quality pieces that could serve everyone. However, during the registration process, the name was accidentally shortened to Uniqlo. What could have been seen as a simple clerical error turned into a stroke of branding genius, giving the company a sleek, modern identity that perfectly matched its evolving vision. Under Yanai's leadership, Uniqlo quickly expanded across Japan, building a reputation for providing affordable, high-quality clothing. Yanai was inspired by international brands like Gap and Benetton, which focused on casual wear for the masses. However, he wanted Uniqlo to go beyond mere fashion. His vision was to create a brand that would not only offer well-made basics, but would also reflect a customer-first mindset, a philosophy that would later become core to Uniqlo's operations. So what exactly is it about Uniqlo that has made it a global phenomenon? At the heart of Uniqlo's rise to global dominance lies a simple yet powerful strategy, offering high-quality, minimalist clothing at affordable prices. While many brands chase trends, Uniqlo has always stayed true to its philosophy of creating timeless, functional pieces. This focus on simplicity, what the brand calls lifewear, is central to Uniqlo's appeal. The idea is that clothing should be accessible to all, regardless of age, gender, or personal style. This dedication to simplicity is not just a business model, it's part of the brand's DNA. Tadashi Yanai, Uniqlo's visionary founder, has long emphasized that the company's mission is to improve people's lives, even in small ways. As he once put it, Uniqlo is not just about selling clothes, it's about creating a better lifestyle. This customer-focused mindset has shaped every aspect of the business, from product development to the in-store experience. Though Uniqlo's designs may seem minimalist, the brand's approach to technology and innovation is anything but basic. Yanai has famously said, Uniqlo is not a fashion company, it's a technology company. This philosophy has pushed the company to invest in cutting-edge fabric technologies like heat tech and airism. These innovations add a layer of functionality to Uniqlo's products, turning everyday essentials into performance wear. Heat tech, for example, is a lightweight fabric designed to keep the wearer warm by converting moisture into heat, while Airism offers breathability and moisture wicking for hot climates. These innovations have become bestsellers and highlight Uniqlo's ability to blend practicality with fashion. It's not just what Uniqlo sells that sets it apart. It's how it sells. Yanai's philosophy of putting the customer first is evident in every Uniqlo store. 
the attention to detail is meticulous, from the way the clothes are folded to the layout of the store, creating a seamless and inviting shopping experience. Uniqlo stores are known for their clean, organized layouts, allowing customers to easily find what they're looking for while encouraging them to browse. This focus on detail extends beyond the retail floor and into the supply chain. Uniqlo follows a SPA, specialty store retailer of private label apparel, which gives the company full control over the entire production process, from design to manufacturing to distribution. This integrated model allows Uniqlo to maintain its high standards of quality and consistency across all its stores while keeping prices competitive. As Uniqlo has grown, so has its commitment to sustainability. The brand's all-product recycling initiative, which encourages customers to return used Uniqlo garments for recycling or redistribution, reflects a growing focus on reducing environmental impact. Uniqlo has also committed to increasing its use of eco-friendly materials, though the company faces ongoing criticism for its reliance on polyester and labor practices within its supply chain. However, Uniqlo continues to make strides, with its sustainability initiatives gaining more attention. While not perfect, these efforts show a willingness to evolve and address the broader social and environmental challenges facing the fashion industry. It's fascinating to realize that Uniqlo's success isn't just built on brilliant strategies or innovative products. It's also the result of daring to fail. Founder Tadashi Yanai has never shied away from mistakes. In fact, it's this very willingness to embrace failure that has helped Uniqlo grow into the global giant it is today. Yanai's unique outlook on setbacks has guided Uniqlo through some of its toughest moments, allowing the company to adapt and come back stronger. Tadashi Yanai's leadership philosophy is built on one core belief. Failure is not something to fear, but to embrace as part of the growth process. He has famously said, when I try something new, I know that I'm going to fail. I do not plan for success from the very first step. For Yanai, failure is essential to learning and innovation. It's through these setbacks that one can better understand what works, and most importantly, what doesn't. Yanai's approach was put to the test during Uniqlo's early attempts at international expansion. Both the UK and US markets presented significant challenges, but instead of viewing these setbacks as defeats, Yanai saw them as valuable learning opportunities. I've made many mistakes, he has said. People take their failures too seriously. This mindset allowed him to pivot and reposition the brand, ultimately transforming Uniqlo's trajectory. As mentioned earlier, Uniqlo's first foray into international markets was anything but smooth. In 2001, when the brand expanded to the UK, it faced unexpected challenges. One major issue was that the company's simple, minimalist style didn't immediately resonate with British consumers. Cultural differences played a significant role, and Uniqlo struggled to find the right balance between its core identity and the local market's tastes. There were also significant sizing issues, as Japanese sizing didn't align with the average British body type. Within a few years, most of the UK stores were forced to close, marking a difficult setback. Uniqlo's experience in the US was similarly challenging. Its initial expansion into New Jersey in the early 2000s faced stiff competition from established American brands like Gap and Abercrombie and Fitch. Uniqlo's basics didn't stand out in a market dominated by brands that were offering more trend-driven fashion. The company's attempt to scale quickly, combined with a lack of cultural understanding, led to disappointing results. Rather than viewing these setbacks as failures, Yanai saw them as vital learning experiences. He understood that Uniqlo's initial strategy, simply replicating its success in Japan overseas, was not enough to sustain the brand internationally. This realization prompted a shift in Uniqlo's strategy. Rather than following the trend-focused approach of many fashion brands, Uniqlo would double down on its philosophy of high-quality basics that never go out of style. Yanai also shifted Uniqlo's focus from rapid store openings to more carefully considered expansions, 
ensuring the brand had a deeper understanding of each market before launching. This pivot away from trying to compete directly with fast fashion. Retailers like H&M and Zara allowed Uniqlo to carve out its own niche, focusing on durability, simplicity, and function. One of the key lessons learned from Uniqlo's early missteps was the importance of adapting to local markets while maintaining its core brand identity. The company realized that to succeed internationally, it needed to be more flexible in its approach. For instance, in the US, Uniqlo adjusted its sizing to better fit the average American consumer, a lesson learned from its struggles in the UK. Additionally, the brand adapted its product lines to meet the seasonal demands of different regions, such as offering thicker winter wear in Europe. Another vital aspect of Uniqlo's adaptation was creating immersive flagship stores in key global cities like London, Paris, and New York. These stores not only showcased Uniqlo's clothing, but also provided customers with a unique shopping experience that reflected the culture of each city. The strategy was clear. Uniqlo would remain true to its minimalist ethos, but it would also tailor its approach to reflect the tastes and preferences of each market. Through this combination of repositioning and adaptation, Uniqlo was able to recover from its initial failures and set the stage for global success. The brand's focus on quality, simplicity, and innovation, coupled with its ability to learn from failure, has become a cornerstone of its worldwide appeal. Uniqlo's success is not just about its sleek, minimalist designs. It's about the blend of technology and collaborations that has elevated the brand to global recognition. From pioneering fabric innovations to high-profile partnerships with designers and cultural icons, Uniqlo has carved out a unique space in the fashion world. Uniqlo has always taken the idea of everyday wear and made it more than just functional. With products like Heat Tech and Airism mentioned earlier, but Uniqlo's focus on fabric technology doesn't stop there. They've also introduced Block Tech, which keeps out wind and rain, and Ultra Light Down, which provides warmth without the weight. By continuously pushing boundaries in research and development, Uniqlo sets itself apart from the trend-focused fast fashion industry. Instead, they focus on quality and utility, ensuring their clothing remains timeless. Uniqlo isn't just about tech, it's also about creating a fresh design perspective by teaming up with some of the world's most respected designers and institutions. One of the most iconic partnerships was with Jill Sander in 2009. The Plus J collection blended Sander's minimalist high fashion sensibility with Uniqlo's functional ethos, catapulting the brand into the global spotlight and showing that basics can be high-end. Looking ahead, Uniqlo's upcoming 2024 collaboration with Marimekko brings a playful twist to winter fashion. Marimekko, known for its bold, nature-inspired prints, adds a splash of color and personality to Uniqlo's winter essentials like fleece jackets and heat tech turtlenecks. It's collaborations like these that allow Uniqlo to stay relevant, offering something new and exciting to its global audience, Looking toward the future, Uniqlo shows no signs of slowing down. The brand has set its sights on expansion across North America, with plans to open over 20 new stores in 2024 in key locations across the US and Canada. This aggressive growth strategy is part of Uniqlo's goal to establish a network of 200 stores in North America by 2027, focusing on high demand areas and new markets like Texas and California Uniqlo is not just focusing on physical stores. It continues to emphasize sustainability and innovation. As part of its long-term goals, Uniqlo's parent company, Fast Retailing, has outlined a 2030 sustainability plan, aiming to reduce the environmental impact of its production processes while still delivering functional and high-quality apparel. As Uniqlo pushes forward, it's clear that the brand will continue to evolve, driven by a unique blend of innovation, global expansion, and a commitment to sustainable growth. What are your thoughts on the popular brand Uniqlo? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Till next time.